YouTube. So it's been quite a while since I filmed my last video. Um, I re kind of restarted my channel because I did have a previous channel um, where I plan to make lots of videos. I, pl I plan to involve my partner in making videos and kind of just be more, I don't know, just involve him more and just make it more a family channel rather than just me. But that kind of didn't work out. Um, everything kind of happened, everything's kind of been so busy and chaotic since moving. Um, I didn't think it'd be like that, I thought it would be really calm, but it's just uh, even more chaotic. Um, there just seems to be so much to do all the time, I haven't really had a chance to sit down and really film videos. Um, but I thought that I would make a like first trimester update video because I'm currently 11 and a half weeks pregnant and I think I filmed my last video when I was five weeks pregnant and a lot has happened I feel like so much has happened since my five week pregnancy update um, and it's been a pretty worrying time for me um, I've experienced things that I've never experienced before so it's been a very up and down kind of roller coaster month about a month since I last filmed. So I just wanted to kind of go through what I've been experiencing and talk more about like what's been going on and what the scans like. So I am 11 weeks and five days I think, five, six days, six days pregnant. Um, that's not like for certain because I haven't had my dating scan yet. I have had three scans, three early scans um, since my five week update. I think my first scan I had was six weeks and then I had another one two weeks later so they could do the measurements properly. That they were both private. And then the third one I had was when I, I had to go to hospital because I had um, a bleeding episode and they scanned me then um, and that was that was NHS, that wasn't part of it. So my first scan, I decided to have an early scan at six weeks because I was really, I was experiencing some yellowish discharge and this is going to be a bit of a TMI because it was a pregnancy video. Um, so yeah, I was experiencing this kind of discharge because you do get an increase of discharge when you're pregnant. I, I definitely do. I did, it, I did it with my daughter. I don't really remember as much as I do now. I think this, I've got more this time around, but with my daughter I did definitely got increased discharge that was more watery than this type so I wasn't really used to it um, so I was a bit worried about that so I booked a scan a couple of days later just to so they could see everything was fine obviously the previous month I had a miscarriage so I also wanted to have an early scan to check viability and to check that everything was going as it should I just really wanted to kind of take precautions this time around just to kind of reassure me um, everything was fine in that scan um, nothing was bad. They couldn't really see much because obviously I was only six weeks or five, five and a half weeks or something like that. So they just saw the sac and milk, yeah, the, the gestational sac and the milk sac and the fetus, but it's obviously, I think they saw a heartbeat as well. No, they can't have seen that. I don't know. I don't remember if they, I don't think they would have seen a heartbeat if that that many weeks but I, I do remember it was very early when they detected the heartbeat much earlier than my daughter um, so everything was fine they they wanted me to come back for another scan in a couple of weeks because they did weren't, weren't able to get the measurements right because it was so small and it's like precautionary for them to um, book another scan if they can't get measurements because it's part of the package so they basically told me to come back in a couple of weeks and they rescanned me when I was about seven and a half, eight weeks, I think I counted myself as eight weeks because I only when I ovulated, so I was kind of able to pinpoint how many weeks I, I, I was. Um, and I was, yeah, I was about eight weeks, but measuring seven, seven weeks, four days, I think. But only because they, it was so small, they couldn't really tell for sure. Um, and that scan was done abnormally rather than internally so obviously it's going to be less accurate um, I had that one done they detected the heartbeat um, the baby had grown the right amount of time um, the right amount in the amount of time and everything was 
was really good. Um, I didn't have any people at that point, so obviously they didn't really mention anything weird or abnormal that was going on down there. <clears throat> so it was mainly like, um, and then they told me everything was fine. They didn't really see anything like abnormal that was down there. I wasn't bleeding or anything at that point, so obviously they and wouldn't tell me that they could see anything. So, um, the next, like, fast forward about, I was about nine and a half weeks, um, and I was, previous in the day, I had been very active, I had, my daughter was staying with her gran, the nan, and she needed picking up, so I had to go and get a bus and pick her up, um, <clears throat> but on the way back there was a um, really bad rainstorm. And I got caught in it and I ended up walking far too fast up hills with like pushing my daughter in a pram and she was quite heavy now, she was seven months old so she's seven and a half months old so she's getting really really heavy. And I was rushing to meet my mum and I was just very very active and I was just exhausted um, and I shouldn't have done it but previous, like later on in that day I noticed myself feeling a little bit damp. So I thought, oh, it's just the increased discharge, it's probably just normal because I've had that for weeks and weeks and weeks, I've had the discharge and feeling uncomfortable and having to, feeling like I need a pad on, just so uncomfortable. Um, and then I looked down and I noticed that my underwear had blood in it and I was really panicking because the last time that happened, obviously I experienced a loss, but it was different last time, it kind of, it, it happened gradually. But very quickly, if, it, if that makes sense, like I started spotting and then the next day it started really bad. But this time it was like a gush um, of bright red blood, it wasn't brown or anything. And it carried on being like pinkish, reddish. It was no like gradual, which is how it happens, how miscarriages have happened to me in the past. I've had two. Um, so it was kind of a bit abnormal, so I had a scan in the hospital, I went by ambulance, um, had to wait a while, and then they scanned me and said that the baby looked fine, everything was going well, the baby had grown actually loads since my early scan, um, was measuring right on dates, so I was a bit like, I don't really know why this is happening. Um, and then they told me that I had some pools of blood, I'm not sure where, I should have asked more questions because I don't know where it, where it was. So, but then it slowed down, it was kind of more brown. And then a couple of days later it kind of started up red again, but a tiny bit it was like spotting, it wasn't bleeding. It wasn't like full on bleeding, it was just spotting, but it was bright red. But then that quickly tapered off into like pink and brown, so it wasn't continuous, it was bright red. Um, and I had a bit of achy cramps, but not really really bad so I wasn't really really concerned but I was still obviously a bit worried about it um, and that carried on like through the week and then I didn't go back to Amy I kind of felt like I needed to because I was really worried about what this bleeding was what this spotting was but I ended up um, booking in for private scan um, when I was about 10 weeks just wanted to check them to check again and to ask more questions and see if they could like see if there was anything there that they could that you know showed on the scan um, and they could tell me if they were worried or not basically they um They sort of um, didn't. They checked the baby. They said the baby's measuring fine. About ten weeks. I was about ten weeks, three days. So you know, give or take three days, it's roughly. I was measuring on on track, and the baby looked healthy. The heartbeat was there. The baby was moving. I've been checking with my fetal Doppler as well um, since bleeding, which has reassured me. I know obviously I can't tell you 
for sure everything's fine because I'm not a doctor. But then hearing that does make it make me feel more reassured and make me feel like the baby is fine, especially because I've had scans and they've told me the baby is fine. It's nothing to do with the baby, it's just to do with my body, I guess. Um, but she then checked me with the, the um, probe and she said I do have a bit of a sub, I can't pronounce this word, but it's like a subcranic bleed. I think it's called either subchronic hematoma or hemorrhage or subchronic like bleeding um, which is what she said I had and it was very she said it was small I don't know how big but she says it was small she said that my body will probably absorb it as pregnancy goes on by the 20th week I think I've read quite a lot about um, SCH and it does seem that that's what I've got because I do have that type of bleeding you know the the, the gush um, it goes to brown and it's continuous, it's literally, it's been continuing for two weeks now I've had it and it hasn't completely stopped. I feel like when it, I feel like it does slow down but then it starts again. So I can't really go for walks, I can't really lift my daughter. Like I lift her sometimes obviously because she's seven months she can't crawl or walk yet so obviously she still needs to be picked up. But I'm trying to limit that, the amount that I do and obviously I'm, I'm avoiding going for walks because that does start it off again. I'm not on bed rest so I'm, able, I'm still walking around but I'm not going to chance going for long walks like I did before, um, not going on fast walks or anything, I'm just going to literally take it easy um, and just like look after my baby and get, ask other people if they can help me with her, like luckily my mum's helping me with Caitlin. Um, she's just taking her for walks and if I do have to take her for walks then obviously I will but I'm not going to be running around like <laughs> running around or anything like that I'm going to be going very slow and it's just going to be like a small walk I'm going to kind of do another video um, on my symptoms like what's, what other symptoms I'm experiencing now I just wanted to kind of talk about my SCH and um, yeah I, don't, I still don't know much about it I don't know where the location is I don't think it's anywhere near the baby because obviously they checked the baby first and they, and they didn't say that they could see it anywhere near the baby they sort of checked away from the baby and then they saw it so I don't think it's anywhere it's nowhere near the baby it's nowhere it's you know not to do with pregnancy it's just to do with like it's just basically a blood clot I think between the uterus and the placenta somewhere um, and it's small sometimes they can grow but then they tell you to, that's why they take, tell you to take it easy don't strain yourself which is why I'm trying to limit the lifting Caitlin um, not going for walks trying to sit as much as possible basically just sit as much as possible um, take it easy and not go mad and literally just take it like accept as much help as I can because you know I do need to rest um, a lot more now with this I never had this with my daughter so I, I was quite active with my daughter I wasn't really really active but I was able to walk around more um, <coughs> go out with my partner and stuff like that but now it's hard because I do have a young baby and I'm experiencing this and it is does make me feel quite guilty but I just think you know she has a lot of people around her she has she's a very happy baby so I'm not being a bad mum by having to kind of take a step back like just look after myself a bit more take it more easy it doesn't mean that I can't be a mum to Kaylee anyway I'm rambling now so I'm going to end this video, I just wanted to go into a bit of detail about what's been happening and about my, if anyone else has a bleed, don't worry completely unless you have really bad cramps and unless it's like you're filling the pad every hour, just don't panic about it, get a scan done um, and then, but it is, I think it's quite a common thing, I'm not sure how common it is, but I have heard that it is a common thing because bleeding is common in pregnancy and especially if it's kind of a gush or if it's just like it looks really bad but then I don't feel like miscarriages happen like that I feel like in my case anyway I'm not saying that everyone else would be like that but in my case it was very it was more gradual but it happened quickly at the same time like it started off gradual and then it got bad really quick this time it's literally it looks really bad at first but then it tapers off but then it's been going on for two weeks so obviously it's nothing like that 
thank goodness. Um, and I hope it continues to taper off, touch wood. I really hope it kind of settles down. Um, I've got I've got my next scan in two weeks time. So well, about a week and a half now. It'll be 12th of April is my 12 week scan. I'll be I'll be about 13 weeks then. So I'm gonna ask then if they can see anything and if um, you know just ask more questions at that scan because that is a more detailed scan, obviously. So yeah, I will see you. I will film. So I will film another video soon on my symptoms. Um, I just don't want this to be like a really really long, boring, kind of dull video. Um, <clears throat> so I'll definitely talk to you again soon. Bye!